All right. Bungie dev stream number two has came and gone. You can watch the replay on Bungie's Twitch stream, or you can just listen to me talk about what I have to think about it because I'm going to be recapping the entire thing. I didn't do this for week one because I thought that it really wasn't that interesting. So just so you know, new game mode, Into the Light, Onslaught, it's a wave-based, 50 rounds. It'll be okay. You get all the new loot from Into the Light through Onslaught and through doing quests. Now, this live stream, they did show off some of Settlu and the new social space. That new social space is what you're seeing on screen now. It is much like the Xur's treasure hoard from the 30th anniversary in that there are class specific chests that you get to unlock by using the seasonal token, the token that you get from doing the Onslaught activity. And it looks like, according to the developers, you just get the individual armor pieces the reissued uh, Parade Armor set. They redid it from all the promo images from Vanilla Base Destiny 1. So that's the new armor set we're getting. And you get those from Onslaught. And if you want specific pieces, you get them from this chest spending the currency. Besides that, there's some cool little Easter eggs. Apparently this part of the tower is where all the decorations for the events are stored, as you're seeing. And this is Shax's domain. Shax is the seasonal vendor. Him alongside one of his little buddies. You can look around the room and you can see there a little there are these hollow projector shacks which when you interact with each specific statue it will allow you to focus earning the specific type of weapon which just means that you're going to be earning that weapon at a higher rate in onslaught this chest that you're seeing on screen right now is similar to that in the treasure hoard that you can just spend strange coins to roll separate weapons. And this secondary chest that we're going to be coming up to in just one second is a reissuing of the Gift of the Thunder Gods back from Season of Plunder. This is basically going to get new players or people that haven't played in a while up to the powerful cap, not the pinnacle cap. So this is going to take it 1800, but you'll still have to earn your way to 1810. Skipping ahead to Shax, the actual vendor here himself you can see much like any other vendor he has levels you earn them by doing onslaught you gain fame with shacks through doing the onslaught activity and obviously you redeem that for rewards at vendor level 17 and or max vendor level however you want to think about it you get a key what is that key unlock that key unlocks a new shader and you go into this little room here behind shacks interact with the heart of the Black Garden, which is contained, presumably, and you get the new version of Super Black, the new blackest shader in the game that is actually an all-black shader. Instead of having to use something like Erebos Glance, which has elements of orange, you can just have an all-black shader, so that's cool. Besides that, there is a secondary vendor right next to Shax, one of his bots, I guess. Uh, this bot in particular serves us quests and bounties that we can do while playing Onslaught. As you can see, there are a couple quests here to get the curated version of a few of the weapons that is coming back via the Brave Armory, which is the new Shax archetype of vendor weapons. We're going to take a look at all of those in just one minute. With the Brave Armory, it is going to be 12 reissued weapons, all of them with a new origin trait, and those 12 weapons are as as follows the mountaintop the recluse falling guillotine for some reason hammerhead blast furnace succession midnight coup luna's howl elsie's rifle returning from destiny one but using the no time to explain model you all all remember this as the stranger's rifle that you got at the end of the destiny one campaign forbearance edge transit is back to haunt us once again they didn't show it off, but Hung Jury is getting reissued as well. All of these Brave Armory weapons come with the Indomitability Origin Trait. This Origin Trait reads as follows. Final Blows grant grenade energy when playing a light subclass or melee energy when playing a darkness subclass. Based on the icon, I believe that the strength of this will be equivalent to the regen you get from Demolitionist and Pugilist respectively for the light and the dark subclasses. I'm just going to let some of the developers' gameplay footage play out so you can see how these new weapons or reissued weapons are going to operate while I talk about some of the things that I noticed about the weapons while watching the stream. 
For starters, all of these weapons have this kind of gold, green, blackish ornament that is attached to all of them. This ornament is exclusive to the time period in between Into the Light and Final Shape. Once this time period is over, you can no longer earn this ornament. These are what the developers call limited edition ornaments that you're going to FOMO, you know, fear of missing out if you don't actually get them now. So make sure to actually play the game if you want to get these guns with these ornaments. And also for the reissued legendary weapons that have ornaments already, that being something like the recluse with the itsy bitsy spider legendary ornament, those will still work on these weapons in the same way that the old Gambit Prime ornaments worked on the reissued season of the deep Gambit Prime weapons. I think this is good, it's a little bit of a bigger incentive, a greater incentive for people to actually play the game during Into the Light instead of just waiting for the final shape and revisiting all of this. Also, this ornament will be removable at any time, so if you don't like the way it looks, you can just take it off and put a shader on it if you want to shade your gun in a specific sort of way. Going down a list for weapons that I don't care about, quite frankly, Hung Jury and Edge Transit, they are getting reissued. Hung Jury, we've seen too many times, I just do not care about it. Maybe the perks will be good, we're going to get confirmation of that in a blog post in the next couple of days. Edge Transit, the developers say that allegedly it is one of the highest damage grenade launcher options in the entire game. I have a couple builds already set up around the existing grenade launchers that are currently the best, i.e. Cataphract, so we'll see how the damage damage compares when it comes out, but Hung Jury Edge Transit I really don't care about. Going down a list of the weapons that I care very deeply about and I'm going to be excited to farm are as follows. Hammerhead, Recluse, Blast Furnace, Luna's Howl, Mountaintop, Elsie's Rifle, and Midnight Coup. Essentially, all of the Year 2 weapons are getting reissued with the addition to Midnight Coup and Elsie's Rifle. I'm very excited for these. Starting off with Hammerhead, I'm just going to replay this clip a couple times, but as you can see, it rolls with the perks Killing Tally and Rampage, and they do stack. The damage on this thing is going to be insane. Gombling Killing Tally and Rampage, I think that this will outpace Commemoration. This completely power creep commemoration. I don't even think that that gun is going to be useful anymore once we get our hands on Hammerhead fully realized as a new Brave Armory weapon. The most infamous power couple in Destiny 2's history, Recluse and the Mountaintop are back. The Recluse has Master of Arms. They didn't take away Master of Arms. However, it is nerfed. It is nerfed severely. It looks like, by crunching the numbers on screen, that the damage increase is around 15%. We'll see the exact percentage that is going to be, but just based off of quick calculations and frame-by-frame -frame analysis, it looks like it's going to be 15% that the Master of Arms buff is good, and Mountaintop is as it has ever been. Micro Missiles is the intrinsic, so do with that what you will. Mountaintop also is able to rocket jump, as you're going to see on screen right now. You can actually look down, look at a wall. If you shoot Mountaintop at your feet, you will be propelled. This has some pretty cool movement tech implications for all you Heat Rises, Warlocks, and really just anybody else, because you can shoot yourself up in the air with a Mountaintop and then use Eagle Edge on a sword and get pretty far. I think this is going to be really good. Mountaintop is going back in the loadout without question. So is Recluse, unless Master of Arms isn't as good good as I think it's going to be, but we'll see when the time comes. Next weapon I care about coming back is Blast Furnace, and Blast Furnace is coming back with a new perk called Last Stand. This perk, Last Stand, we don't know the exact numbers on it yet, but think of it as a modified version of Golden Tricorn, where kills with the weapon will provide you a refreshing 7 second damage buff. Don't know how much exactly the damage buff is. It looks like it is around 8% at level 1, but it stacks several levels when you get kills with your melee or your grenade. Unfortunately, the developer playing the game on screen never actually used used the perk last stand to its potential, meaning they never meleeed or used an ability to kill, so I wasn't able to actually get those numbers. That being said, the perk Last Stand, its name isn't actually going to be Last Stand. It is a work in progress name. We're going to find out what the name of this new perk is. 
Displayed on screen, now another weapon I care about, Elsie's rifle. This is just a reissuing of the Stranger's rifle. As you can see, it is just no time to explain. It is the same archetype. It has all of these same stats. The only thing is it doesn't have the exotic perk. I have a feeling that this thing is going to be really, really strong considering how good high impact pulse rifles are right now. I'm excited for this. Midnight Coup also coming back, a weapon that I'm very excited about. This used to be my main weapon along with most of the community's main weapon during year one because it was probably the best weapon in the game at the time. Uh, we know uh, starters, it has explosive payload and kinetic tremors. Sounds like it'll be good. This thing is going to be reissued. I'm very excited for Midnight Coup. Luna's Howl. I'm very excited for this to be coming back. We all remember how it terrorized the Crucible. It is coming back as a 140 hand cannon that has the precision frame, meaning it's going to retain all of the animations it had as a 180 hand cannon. This is the one you could just get from collections right now, except the perks are going to be a little bit different. Very excited for this one. Besides those weapons, I want to talk about three that I don't really care about and am kind of concerned about. For starters, Forbearance, I see no reason why they felt the need to bring Forbearance back. For starters, Forbearance, you can get it. If you get Witch Queen, it's still in the game. It's been in the game. Their philosophy was, since this is going to be available for new players and really everybody, because Into the Light is a free update, they wanted everybody to have access to this specific weapon. However, they did just introduce another arc waveframe grenade launcher in Undercurrent that you could just get from the Vanguard playlist. So this one was a little bit of a missed opportunity and I think was kind of a waste of one of the 12 slots that they had. Another weapon coming back that they didn't really show off was the Fallen Guillotine. Now, Fallen Guillotine, it's good, yes, and it has an Eager Edge in the fourth column. It is the second sword outside of the 30th anniversary weapons that actually has access to Eager Edge, but they just gave us the slammer. It really doesn't make a whole heck of a lot of sense to me. Like, they give us two great weapons in Undercurrent and in the slammer, and then they just give us power crept versions of them immediately. Every other weapon on this list that they introduced makes sense for them to bring back because they've been sunset forever. They haven't been in the game with the exception of Hung Jury. Hung Jury, you've been able to get in various forms, but they're reissuing it another time. It really just doesn't make a whole heck of a lot of sense to me. And also Succession, the sniper rifle from Deep Stone Crypt is being reissued as well. Again, the same thing applies. Do I understand it? Yes. Do I like it? No. Hopefully? It'll be good? I mean, maybe. We'll see. I think it's going to be good because it's obviously going to be a power crap version of the regular version of Succession. I just feel that this is a major missed opportunity, including Succession, Forbearance, and Falling Guillotine in the Brave Armory. So, of the 12 returning weapons, 7 of them great. I'm very excited for, like I said, Hammerhead Recluse, Blast Furnace, Lunas Howl, The Mountaintop, Elsie's Rifle, and Midnight Goo. Very excited for. The other five weapons, Hung Jury, Edge Transit, Succession, Forbearance, and Falling Guillotine, give or take, I think that they'll be good. I'm just concerned and a little bit confused and think that it is a big missed opportunity not bringing back more of the other fan favorite sunset weapons from year one and year two. So, besides the social space and the weapons, they didn't actually show anything off. I examined pretty thoroughly all of the footage. They intentionally didn't open any of the chests, so there was never a hint at what was going to drop out of them. This could mean that there's some update to the world loot pool because they didn't open any of the Lost Sector chests. You know, we'll see. We'll see when the time comes. We're going to get more information from that. Next week, we're going to get some Crucible information. We're going to see some other maps. We're going to see the PvP map pack that they've been working on for quite a while. And besides that, that's my recap of the Bungie developer stream. Overall, between this developer stream and the last one, I think that this is a massive W for Bungie. I do appreciate the hell out of the developers actually taking the time to do this. I know developer streams and Bungie's communication with their community has been subpar. 
for the past several years. This is a major step in the correct direction. Please, dear God, keep on doing more things like this. I would love to see it. We're getting some pretty great memes out of it, specifically Noah, the Bungie dev, and I quote, yeah, great. He was locked in. They were locked in today. Everybody was doing their job. It was a good stream. Apart from that, I'm done gapping. Thank you all for watching my video. If you liked it, leave a like. Subscribe if you haven't. I'd really appreciate it. Have a great rest of your day. Thank you for watching. Oh yeah, forgot to mention. Also, 100 new vault space. Vault cap going up from 600 to 700. So, you stuck around this long? Great. Bye.